Backyard Baseball, the original, it's an iconic game with iconic characters, but I've noticed a lot of opinions on which characters in the game are the strongest that don't at all match with my recollections of the 24 year title. So of course, I set course to devote 50 hours to collecting data on players within the game and compiling it to reveal the definitive best performers. Here are the 10 that emerged at the top. Annie Frazier's biggest strength is her ability to make consistent and solid contact over all parts of the zone, and she doesn't require incredible accuracy on the part of the player to do it. Her swing provides a low trajectory, which is great for avoiding flyouts, but does limit her home run potential. Her speed doesn't stand out one way or the other, but her player card warns that her stamina is below average, so while her defense is serviceable, it's best to save her juice for her offensive pursuits. This hippie girl's consistency snags her the last spot in the top 10. Too bad only 9 players make up a team within the game. The wing. I love fly. Go. Dmitry Petrovich earns the 9 slot mostly due to the power offered by his signature pike jump swing, which he assures us is optimal according to his calculations. Hard to argue too much with his results, Dmitry hits bombs. Like a lot of players in the game, he favors going to right center field for power on pitches middle away. His swing isn't as forgiving as Annie and he will pop up or even miss completely should the aiming be inadequate. Like Annie, his speed is decent, but his stamina can be poor, so optimal strategy will involve avoiding draining his juice as his at-bat approaches. The nerdy slugger claims himself number 9 honors. Luane Louis has an elite tool. Speed. She boasts the second fastest speed in the game, and the next player down is not particularly close. Speed is extremely helpful, especially considering discrepancies between players in this game greatly exceed those in most baseball video games. Unlike the last two players, she is also noted by beloved commentator Vinny the Gooch as having great stamina and not tiring easily. Sure, her bat doesn't have elite pop, but she is capable of finding gaps with runners on base. I wouldn't be too concerned about her fielding and even find that she can be a defensive boost in certain spots, such as behind the plate with all the little doinkers the AI tends to hit. She's even a great option to tow the rubber for you. The Teddy Clutching 4 year old speed demon steals spot number 8. <coughs> Sydney and Ashley Weber have a trick to them that Stephanie Morgan generously reveals. Just take it from me though, sometimes the personalities of the players affect how they play together. Take Sydney and Ashley Weber for instance, they're okay players and all that, but get them in the same lineup, forget it, game over and you've got a W. It's true, the tennis twins rake. The only catch is you can't just pick one. They're capable of both pull hitting and going oppo, they have a tight swing spot locator, their strike zone is fairly condensed. Speed-wise, they are fairly average, probably ever so slightly faster than Annie and Dimitri. Defensively, I like to either use them on the mound or in the outfield, finding that their catching ability can be inconsistent, but they carry cannons off their right shoulders and have high potential for outfield assists. The Weber twins together tie for 6th in the top 10 ranks. Keisha Phillips has a bit of a learning curve to extracting her true potential, and at first I was underperforming with her. This due to her larger swing spot, larger strike zone, and the slight hitch she performs before executing her swing. I made adjustments, mainly the willingness to take certain pitches very high and low in the zone early in the counts, and then her productivity exploded. She has elite power, and she moves way better than her size would have you expect. On top of that, she may be the most reliable fielder in the game, teaming good speed with a good arm and a great glove. Here's Keisha digging in in the fifth spot on the list. Leading off the inning, Amir Khan. 
Amir Khan must be the most criminally slept on character in this ancient title. Maybe I can forgive guys for not knowing because his true power is unlocked only when paired with his big bro, but we are given the heads up from his player card. With this simple requirement met, he becomes a top hitter in the game. He prefers to go oppo, but is capable of covering the entire dish. Solid contact away is practically guaranteed to be gone. It's actually silly. His speed matches the 9 and 10 winners as average. I tended to use him as a rover in the field, finding his skills to be all around serviceable. The younger rocker brother is a top four player. Stop sleeping. Go, go. I'm gonna hit a touchdown. Pete Wheeler was probably my favorite player as a kid. The undisputed king of speed pairs his elite skill with better hitting than you might realize. It's pretty comparable to Dimitri. His speed draws a drastic distinction. Dimitri managed to score 25% of plate appearances for me while Pete's percentage shot up to 35 on the back of his wheels alone. Pete is also unique in that he seems partial to pull hitting in an oppo meta. Pete can even do you good in the field. I like him at second base because he'll cover a lot of ground and his arm is a bit weak or have him make a mound appearance where he can show off his aggressive windmill delivery. Pete earned his spot of number three. He can run real good. Ahmed Khan is ahead of Wheelie, so you know he excels. And the place he excels at is the batter's box, another guy with oppo tendencies, but also good power to the pull side, perhaps the best power hitter in the game, and the best production from the plate in the game. Maybe you think there's one better. It's close, but my testing has Ahmed pulling ahead, so why is he only ranked second? Well, his speed is nothing too special, only just beating out his little brother. So, while his chances to slug a high percentage are great, he leaves the door open and run scoring potential. His glove is reliable as long as he doesn't suddenly elect to mash his air guitar instead of catching the ball. The rock enthusiast from Pakistan pounds his way to the second spot honors. Get on your horse. Move over, Pablo Sanchez is the best player. You thought you already knew this, but it just now became official. Maybe you didn't know that he and Ahmed were neck and neck in hitting production, but we all know how great the supposedly secret weapon is, so instead I'll give you some dirt on our Spanish-speaking amigo. His defense is severely overrated. He's actually a terrible catch. You may already know this and you're just blocking it out because your love for Pablo is so great. We've all been there. It's okay to admit the truth. Pablo can't catch. But... It's all good. Just hide him somewhere in the outfield and reap the rewards on offense. Or even put him on the mound. He's plenty good there. Honestly, nearly everyone is. Pitching doesn't really matter in this game. Oh no. Was that another fact you weren't admitting to yourself? Wow. What a great opportunity for growth for you. Getting back to Pablo though. He, of course, rakes. Oppo is his preference. Good play coverage. Pinpoint swing spot. Keisha-like speed all crammed into a lovable round package. Number one on the official charts, and number one in our hearts. Since you're still here, you must have liked the video, so mash like. Any surprise omissions for you? Comment. If you want to see more, subscribe. Wow, it's like there's something to do no matter how you reacted to the video. That's crazy.